Jordan Neely was uh, was murdered by uh, being choked to death on a uh, subway train. A lot of people defended that murder and said that that was the right thing to do. And it's kind of crazy to see how many people living in the suburbs or even in the city uh, behave in this like murderous way to justify a murder. Neely's crime was being in a state of mental distress. Uh, the amount of people that have been defending it on the timeline on Twitter is fucking wild. But yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at how the media is covering it. By the way, the media does have blood on its hands. If, like any other homeless person that gets fucking murked on the streets of New York, the media has played an active role in it. They literally immediately added passive voice like they do when a cop kills someone. Like this guy is, is uh, you know, a cop. He has been deputized in the moment to, like, fucking execute someone in the same way the cops do. Like, we, we shit on cops when they do this. Why the fuck is it okay when a civilian does it? New protests in New York City last night demanding an arrest for the death of a homeless man on the subway now ruled a homicide. Witnesses say 30-year-old Jordan Neely was speaking aggressively, allegedly threatening others and saying he didn't care if he died. That's when a Marine veteran put him in a chokehold for roughly 15 minutes, other passengers holding his arms. Neely would later be pronounced dead at the hospital. The Marine veteran was questioned and then released. He killed someone and he choked them for 15 minutes, and he did it in front of witnesses. And witnesses who admit, admit, that there was no physical contact between Jordan Neely and any passenger on that train. Neely, who made money as a Michael Jackson impersonator, had been arrested more than 40 times, including for assault and disorderly conduct. And he had a documented history of mental health issues. Dude, what are you doing? Like, what are these fucking stills, dude? They are such monsters. They literally fucking covered this like it's a cinematic sequence. You know what I mean? Like, stop. I don't think people need to see this over and over again. Like, we get it. It was newsworthy maybe in the first day. I, I understand the other side of the argument, which is like, people need to see the brutality. But it's wild to me when they just like, Show it over and over again. Advocates say the tragedy is more evidence of the system failing to address what's now become a mental health crisis across America. There's some forms of mental illness that are episodic. It doesn't mean that because you see someone in a moment that they are, uh, you know, in, in the, the worst possible condition. Perhaps he was in distress, but there are different degrees of distress. And again, uh, the situation that was presented was not one where he was in i haven't even looked into this person's background but what are we doing i thought michael brown was the last time legacy media was like um actually doing the whole like here is the fucking criminal background of the person that was executed in the hands of the police is it because it's new territory where we are like officially deputizing whatever fucking ye as gung ho motherfucker that wants to execute a poor person? Is that what's going on? Now we're doing the, the, the fucking background. You don't know what the criminal background of this person is in the moment. Like, what does that mean? I, I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Like they don't even do this for cops anymore. We all, re we all recognize how fucked up that is because a cop doesn't know what that person's background is when they're behaving in a violent way, they're reacting because they see a black person. So what difference is there when it's a fucking random citizen? I don't get it. Like, this guy murdered somebody, and the media rushed to immediately talk about his, like, background, talk about the victim's background, sorry. They hid the truth. They didn't want to talk about how the fucking dude who killed someone was, uh, they only said he was a vet, a former Marine, they never actually said uh, that his dad was a fucking New York State trooper, obviously, uh, which, you know, certainly adds another layer to it, don't you think? Yeah, for the record, it looks like the Daily Mail accidentally leaked the last name of Jordan Neely's killer Daniel Penny on a photo caption hours before he was actually identified. So now it's confirmed that the news orcs had his name for some time, but did not release it to protect him. Penny is seen restraining Jordan Neely on an F train in NoHo Monday afternoon. Neely fell unconscious, died shortly afterwards. Um, I don't know. Oh, uh, fuck. I'm sorry to show you that. I don't know if uh, that's uh, confirmed or not, but they literally removed the name for the caption after this tweet came out. On Monday night, Jordan Neely was placed in a chokehold on a subway by an unnamed former Marine. They knew his name and they hid it. Why did they do that, you think? Why? Let's fucking, let's see if the, the, the exact steps 
that took place for Jordan Neely to become the person that he became. Let's identify like if he ever cheated uh, at school all the way down to that level to justify his execution. But God forbid we find out what the fucking killer's name is because then we could do some, you know, do some actual uh, research on the matter on the dude who fucking killed the person. There are people who you can just murder, okay? And everyone will celebrate you for it. Homeless people, you know what I mean? A black homeless person in a state of mental uh, direct, in a in a state of mental distress in public, it's done. It's a wrap. These people are not seen as those who are failed by the state. They are seen as criminals automatically. And it doesn't matter if their fucking rap sheet is filled to the brim with loitering, loitering arrests, with fair evasion arrests. They will turn around and say 44 times he's been arrested. This guy's a massive criminal. Mind-boggling, but we are a deeply evil society. We are a deeply evil society. AOC says Jordan Neely was murdered, but because Jordan was houseless and crying for food at a time of the city's raising rents and shipping services to militarize itself, while many in power demonize the poor, the murderer gets protected with a passive headlines and no charges. It's disgusting. She's right. She said the right thing. But guess what? You can say the wrong thing and get a lot of praise in this country. If everyone is fucking violent, if everyone fantasizes about the moment they could, they too could be deputized to do an execution and they fantasize about it and someone finally does it. We saw it with Kyle Rittenhouse. A lot of people will celebrate you. Your central committee said this is just the sum of the total of a cascade of failures in our systems. Americans can't imagine living in a country where housing is a right, with mental health care is a right, with free public transit is just so depressing. How far people are from even understanding what a humane society looks like. Yeah, we're fucking animals. We are animals. We're violent, bloodthirsty animals cheering on the villain in the situation because of a possible hypothetical justification for why he had to act out in the way that he did. When all the witnesses surrounding the incident say that Neely did not pose a threat. Who's more of a threat? A fucking homeless person who's going crazy on the subway? Or the guy who killed him? Or, and I'll take it one step further, cackling hyenas all around that are now celebrating the murderer instead of highlighting the homeless person that was first victimized by the systems and then personally victimized by the murderer. Who's more violent? I think the people celebrating the fucking murder are more violent. We're moving beyond just like allowing cops to kill whoever the fuck they want on site, especially black people, especially unarmed black people. They could do that. That's fine. We move beyond that now. We're deputizing random people that are also acting out the desires of a white supremacist violent state. It's no longer the state that holds the monopoly of violence. It's those who act out the desires of the state that have the monopoly on violence. Even in a blue state, in a blue city like New York City, you got a cop that's a fucking mayor that's defending a guy who just killed a fucking Homeless person on the subway uh, train. This is how violent we have become as a country. We are the barbarians, okay? And I don't mean that in some cool way. I mean, like, literally. It's barbarism. We are the violent ones. It's not the dudes that get fucking brain broken after having to brave the elements for years and years and years because they got priced out of the housing market. They became houseless. They had to fucking self-medicate. They started doing drugs. They started panhandling and dancing to fucking make money so they could put food on their fucking, uh, put food in their mouths, not even on their tables because they have no shelter. They, they wanted to put clothes on their backs. And then they were begging for food and water in their last moments where they got fucking mercilessly executed by a dude who took the matter of the law into his own hands. He didn't even want to wait till it was outsourced at the next fucking train station by a cop. He said, I'm going to do it myself. And now 
We're defending that. Many of the people that defend that execution are like one bad healthcare crisis away from being Jordan Neely. That's the craziest part. 40% of this country does not have $400 in emergency funds. 40% of this country. That means you're one unfortunate accident away from being Jordan Neely. Because God knows we don't have a lot of fucking, uh, you know, chapter 11 bankruptcy style money saving provisions for the working class. The best you get if you're in a fuckload of debt due to unforeseeable conditions is maybe a little bit of fucking welfare. And even that is conditional. And even that's constantly being, uh, uh, you know, uh, talked about as, a, as though it's a moral hazard. You got no safety nets if you're working class in this fucking country. And you are so close to being just like Jordan Neely. And you don't even know it because, hey, you got a steady diet of Mountain Dew coming down your way. You, get, you can go to Applebee's every now and then and pay for a $5 jalapeno popper. You got a new TV in the living room. So you don't even think about it. You're like, fuck it. That's not going to happen to me. That's crazy. You don't know. You have no control over your workplace. You have no freedom. People still talk shit about the writer strike. Oh, I don't like their fucking writing. Uh, I don't like the, the content they're putting out. Meanwhile, where, where do you fucking work? You work in as, a, as an accountant. You know what I mean? You think people like what you do? No. Is that what we're doing? We're making qualitative assessments on your fucking job and how I personally feel about it for you to get back a larger percentage of the fucking value that you literally generate? You're a white collar guy who sits and listens to me at fucking work all goddamn day, making it seem like you're working every time your manager passes by and you're over here making assessments on, well, do you deserve a percentage of the fucking value that you generate? Only if I like what you're doing. We're all doing the same dumb shit, okay? And the difference between someone like yourself and someone like Neely is that his spawn point was worse than yours. We have to have more empathy for people. We have to have more empathy for people, even if we are not close to them. Even if we are not close in, 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 uh, in socioeconomic proximity to them. Okay? We have dismantled the humanity of every single American. We have dismantled it. You have no opinion on anyone that doesn't revolve around like, fuck you, what does this do to me? I don't give a fuck about you. What does this say about me? My, my feelings. Well, can, we, can we center the conversation around my feelings? I'll talk about a strike and someone will go, oh, that's ableist. I can't do a strike. Strikes actually put me in harm's way. I got fucking mental issues. I'll kill myself. I don't fucking watch Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why? Why are you bringing that up? You don't have to be so hyper-individualistic. Oh, well, you know. Homeless guy in a, in a state of mental distress was executed. Well, guess what? You know, I'm a, I, I'm a tiny woman and I'm scared. Okay. So maybe it was okay that this guy got executed. It's like, yeah, if you're a tiny woman and you're scared of the fucking black homeless dude, let me tell you something about the white guy that killed him. Okay. You should be just as scared, if not infinitely more scared of the other dude. Okay. Because he actually killed someone. You're scared of the hypothetical of the homeless guy. You should be way more scared of the other dude, okay? Because that other dude killed someone and almost got away with it and might still get away with it. But that's what happens when you successfully depersonalize, successfully dehumanize an entire group of individuals. And I'm not just talking about the fact that he was black. That obviously is a compounding factor in this process. I'm talking about the fact that he was homeless, okay? That's it. We've been conditioned into avoiding homeless people and seeing them as human beings because we see those human beings get destroyed every fucking day. We watch them brave the elements. We watch them take shits outside because there's no fucking public bathrooms. And if you had to step back and think this is a human being for a brief moment, you would fucking lose your mind. That's such a devastating thing to see. 
devastating. Think about it. A real human being could be your mom, could be your dad, could be your brother, could be your sister. They're out there living in a fucking, uh, you know, tent every night with fear that they don't know how they're going to feed themselves, where the next food is coming from. They don't know. So instead of dealing with that reality, instead of, you know, coming to terms with the reality that we have like, uh, you know, we have all these people that are absolutely destroyed all around us trying to survive every single day, we decide to not see them as human because that's easier. Because if you think that they're fucking human beings, then holy shit, what are we doing to human beings? What are we allowing to happen to human beings right in our vicinity? And that level of depersonalization is how you arrive at this kind of action being defended by a broader population. The amount of people that have been defending this shit is crazy. I mean, and the ways that they've been defending it is crazy. Baya Ungar Sargon says, Deputy Opinion Editor of Newsweek, of course. Because I ride the subway a lot. Not a week goes by that a mentally ill person doesn't get on and terrorize the entire car, especially women, especially Asians. Usually the men just sit there and pretend it's not happening. It's a disgrace that New Yorkers had to live like this. Okay, what about a dead person? Are you telling me, honestly, that like, Choke slamming and executing a fucking person is like less bad than a person being a nuisance. Like that's because that's what you're saying. Every single thing I hear from motherfuckers like this, every single time I'm like, okay, so someone died in front of you. Like they were physically executed in front of you and you're, that's your preference. You're like, you want a show? You want some popcorn to go along with that murder? Like, what's happening? We don't even know enough to judge what happened to Jordan Neely, but lots of people who don't live in New York, lots of people who don't ride the subway have a lot of opinions. Bitch, you have an opinion? Fuck you mean? You don't know what happened, but I have an opinion. You made an assessment. You made an assessment right here. This assessment is defending the murder. So it didn't take much for you to make that assessment. So why the fuck are you upset that someone's immediate inclination is to go, maybe we should fucking try to understand why someone is a victim. You're not only defending the person who did the homicide, but turning around and saying, why are people defending the murder victim? That's crazy. That's a crazy ass thing to fucking say. You're like, nah, whenever a murder happens, I immediately go, how do I blame the victim? Michael Hud says... I worked inpatient psych in Detroit for six years, only had CPI, crisis prevention and intervention training. I never heard a patient while de-escalating a violent situation. Also reported coworkers when I did witness abuse in any form. People are delusional that you need a fatal chokehold to de-escalate. Yeah. You're a white woman. You can pass me without a whole weaponized Asian woman on the platform of anti-blackness. Asian women can speak for ourselves, and I haven't seen any argument that a young black man frustrated by this capital system deserves to be murdered by a Marine. This way of evoking the injured Asian body is rooted in imperialist fantasies of Asian women needing to be saved, and it goes hand-in-hand -hand with the criminalization of black men. Both valorize the white male soldier cop savior complex. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of good takes. This incident didn't even have anything to do with Asian women, but instead of the militarization of white citizenry to do the work of the carceral state, Opie doesn't actually have Asian women's interest in mind at all, but wants to use it as a theoretical prop to justify lynching. Yeah. Anyway, like I said... If you want to understand why people have so much anger towards homeless people, it's because it's not normal. Like, it is not normal to have that level of human suffering in front of you all day, every day. You live in a city, you see it all the time. And uh, in an effort to deal with that internally, instead of recognizing how fucked up that is and how that's a byproduct of the system that we exist under, you have to make deeply hyper individualistic reasons for why it exists. It's got to be some personal moral failing, you know? And then you end up dehumanizing the individual who's victims of, uh, who's a victim of the systems so that you can feel more comfortable avoiding seeing their fucking uh, plight. You know? That's it. You do that for a long enough time, you know, you can justify any kind of cruelty that they are subjugate, they're subjected to. Any kind of subjugation. <sighs> sad, man. Fucking sad.